Hello and welcome. In the previous video, we saw the importance and the application of transformer. We also saw that without transformer, transmission of electricity over such a long distance is not even possible. So definitely transformer is the most useful equipment in the electrical engineering. And we start definitely we start the study of transformer with learning the ideal transformer because the ideal transformer sets the base for the further concepts about the transformer and hence if you have a good idea about ideal transformer then learning of practical transformer becomes really really easy and even if you see in today today's world most of the practical transformer they try to behave like ideal transformer it is designed like that and hence studying the ideal transformer first is always a good idea right so we will start with that but before we start if you want to join the complete and detailed course on a transformer you have to download the electrical guy mobile app the course will be available from 26th january 2022 and you can get up to 20 percent discount on that under the launch offer so definitely do not miss the offer download the electrical guy mobile app i'll give link for downloads down in the description do it now but now let's start with the ideal transformer so definitely to understand the ideal transformer we first need to understand the basics how the transformer works on, on what principle it works right so we will start with voltage induced in a simple coil and first we understand of course the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction now it is very important that you understand faraday's law because on this principle only the transformer works and not only transformer dc generator ac induction motors they all work on faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so hence it is very important that you understand faraday's law very clearly right now i already have a video on this i will give link for that video down in the description you can go and check that out here i'll just brief you about the faraday's law now while experimenting michael faraday made a very important discovery what he discovered if the flux linking to a coil varies as a function of time a voltage is induced across the terminal of the coil let's read it one more time if the flux linking to a coil varies as a function of time a voltage is induced across the terminal of that coil so let's say we have a coil and a flux is linking to them and if we change that flux a voltage will be induced across that coil that's what he discovered so for example let's take this coil here to this coil let's say we are uh, you know this coil is subjected to magnetic flux as you can see on your screen now let's say this as you let's assume this flux are produced by the permanent magnet which is near to the coil and if we vary this flux a voltage will be induced across these terminal of the coil you see the permanent magnet and the coil there is no physical connection between them but still a voltage is getting induced across the terminal of that coil you see that is the magic of electrical engineering so that is one of the most important discovery Michael Faraday has made. Now the next question comes is on what basis or how do we decide how much voltage will be induced in the coil? Okay, we are subjecting coil to the flux. We are also varying that. But how do we decide how much amount of voltage will be induced in that coil? Right? That is the question. Well, fortunately, Faraday also gave answer for that. He says, the value of the induced voltage is proportional to the rate of change of flux very simple the value of induced voltage depends upon the rate of change of these flux so if you vary the flux faster a higher voltage will be induced if you vary the flux slower a lower voltage will be induced so it depends upon the rate of change of flux understood understood what is faraday's law of electromagnetic induction it simply says if the flux linking to a coil varies as a function of time a voltage is induced across the time across the coil and the value of the induced voltage is proportional to the rate of change of flux clear now for sure we also have a mathematical representation for that you can see that on your screen so e is equals to 
Now E stands for the voltage induced across the terminal of this coil. N times the delta phi by delta T. N is the number of turns of the coil that we are using and delta phi by delta T is the rate of change of flux with respect to time. So that is the mathematical representation for the voltage induced. Clear? Now let's move on. Now take the same coil. The only difference is now we have connected a alternating voltage source to that EG. As you can see, this coil is having n number of turns. And as we have seen, the moment we connect the coil, current starts flowing through this coil and a flux will be induced. Clear? And because the flux are induced, uh, a voltage will induce across the terminal of this coil based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction that we just saw. Now, the value of that voltage E can be given by E is equals to 4.44 times F times the N times the phi max. Now, E is equal to, as we saw, is the effective induced voltage. Right? Effective induced voltage. F is the frequency. Now, it varies country to country. In some countries, it is 50 hertz. In some countries, it is 60 hertz. N is number of turns. Phi max is the peak value of flux. Remember that it's a peak value and not the RMS value. And 4.44 is, of course, a constant. Now, this equation here is a really, really important equation. And this is also known as the EMF equation of transformer. And why it is important? Because it gives us the induced voltage across the transformer. So if you are designing a transformer and you need to know how much voltage will be induced in our transformer, in our secondary coil, then you need to know this equation. And of course, that voltage depends upon all these parameter F, number of turns and phi max. And using this equation also, you can find out the value of phi max. Right? Clear? Good. Now let's move on. Now let's understand the applied voltage and the induced voltage. Now let's take the same coil we saw just now. Supply EG is given to that coil and the coil is having n number of turns. Now the moment we switch on the supply, a current will start flowing through this. Now since this current will produce the flux, the MMF in the coil, it is called as the magnetizing current and it is represented by IM. Clear? And this IM will produce the flux in the coil as you can see. Now this flux will be definitely in phase with IM. Right? Because this flux is produced by IM, so definitely the flux will be in phase with IM. But if you see, this is an inductive circuit. Coil is what? It's an inductive. And in inductive circuit, as we know, current always lags behind the voltage by 90 degree. So if you have to show it in the phasor way, we will show it like this. So you see, this is the supply voltage we have, EG. And IM is 90 degree out of phase by supply voltage EG. Clear? This is the basic property of inductive circuit. And we also saw that the flux produced by the IM will be in phase with current IM. Now let me quickly brief you what is happening here. We have connected a EG to this coil which is having n number of turns. Current IM is flowing that is creating the flux. Now this flux will induce the voltage across the terminal of the coil and that voltage is given by E based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Clear? And as we have seen, the value of this E can be given by four, E is equals to 4.44 times the frequency times the number of turns times the flux max. This is the equation. Now if you observe the left hand side image carefully, you will find that the induced voltage E and the supply voltage EG is appearing across the same terminals. Apply, uh, induced voltage E and the applied voltage EG is appearing across the same terminal of the coil. Clear? So that means 
Eg will be equal to E. Applied voltage will be equal to induced voltage. So what we will do, we will write uh, the equation like this. Instead of E, we write Eg because Eg is equals to E. Now, if you solve this equation further, we can find out the value of phi max. So that is given by phi max is equals to Eg that is applied voltage divided by 4.44 times the frequency times the number of turns. Now this equation here is also one of the important equation. Why? Because it tells us that the value of flux, it depend upon the applied voltage. Because we saw 4.44 is constant, frequency will remain constant and number of turns of the coil will also remain constant. So if you take one particular coil, the number of turns won't be changing, right? So the only parameter that remains is the applied voltage EG and the value of flux depend upon this applied voltage EG. That is why this equation is really, really important. So I hope you understood the basics of transformer. What is applied voltage? What is induced voltage? The Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. If that is clear, in the next video, we will learn about a very basic transformer. And to get update of that video, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you find this video helpful, the only request I have is click on the like button and do share it with your friends, right? So thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.